Alright folks, so today Chorus is announcing another round of new features for nearly all their watches and with this new update there's a new daily stress feature, a new wellness check feature, as well as a new feature that collects advanced running form metrics. So let's go ahead and start out with this new daily stress feature. So there's now a daily stress widget which shows your current stress level and also shows a historical chart of your stress over time during the day and it uses heart rate and heart rate variability to get this metric. And then on the app side of things, you can view even longer term historical data. So here's where you can see your averages, your range, a chart of different points during the day, as well as a breakdown of different stress ranges, like if you are calm, low, medium, or experiencing high stress. And the aim with this new feature is to help you better understand how different factors in your day are contributing to your stress levels. Not just your sleep and your workouts, but all the other stuff that happens like your work stress, meetings, putting away the laundry, basically all that daily stuff that goes on behind the scenes that can also contribute to stress or, or more relaxed state for that matter. And you can use this data to maybe better assess maybe when to train next or maybe when to rest. One thing to note though about enabling this new stress tracking feature is that it does require a bit more power since it's taking more frequent samples of your heart rate and heart rate variability. And then another new feature more on the health side of things is a new wellness check feature. So what this does is that it's basically taking a bunch of different health measurements all at one time, including your stress level, heart rate, heart rate variability, breathing rate, and blood oxygen saturation levels, and delivers this at the moment report for you with all these metrics. Your watch is already collecting all these metrics already, but there may be times that you want to get an at the moment report of all these metrics at one time. Like let's say first thing in the morning to get a baseline, which is super useful to see how your body's recovering. Or maybe if you're not feeling good and think you may be getting sick, you could just do a quick check to see if any markers are off or even right after training to see how your body's responding. And then just like the daily stress feature, they have all this information collected for you in the app where you can also see wellness checks that you've done over time. Now with the Apex 2, the Apex 2 Pro, the Vertex 1, as well as the Vertex 2, you'll place your finger on the crown to start the wellness check. But with the Pace 2 and the Pace 3, you don't need to actually do this, but the information that's collected in the wellness check is the same between all the models, as long as your particular watch supports it. Oh, and for all these new features, by the way, these are gonna be available for all of Chorus's more current watches, with exceptions being the 42 and 46 millimeter original Apex, the original Pace 1, as well as the Kip Run 500. Okay, and then last but certainly not least, there's their new running form test feature. And what this does is that it provides a detailed report of your running dynamics, and you'll need either a pod one or pod two running pod to get this report. So there's a pretty good amount of data that your watch can already collect from the wrist, like cadence, stride length, and running power, but there's additional things that can only be measured using an accessory like their pod one or pod two. So like their pod two, for instance, this already collects all these additional metrics like ground contact time, stride ratio, as well as left and right balance. But what they've done here is create a specific test that takes all the data and gives you an assessment that you could potentially use to better understand all those data points to see where you may be able to improve. So to perform this test, like I was mentioning, you will need one of their pods to do this, either their pod one or their pod two, and you'll wear this on the waist. And this is basically just a 10 minute test that you can find under fitness tests where you'll do a five minute warm up and then a five minute actual run right around tempo pace. And then when you're done with the test, they have this nice detailed report. And then if we dive into the assessment details, here's where they break it down for you even further into three categories. So there's your running skill, your running strength, and your running balance. So for running skill, this is comprised of ground contact time, as in how long each foot is staying on the ground with each step, the strike angle of each foot strike, as well as the stride ratio, as in the ratio of my vertical movement to my horizontal movement with each step. And then for stride length, this is comprised of leg stiffness, which represents how your legs rebound when they hit the ground, and then peak ground reaction force, which is how strong your legs are when they actually push off the ground. And then finally, there's balance, which is pretty self-explanatory, as in how much I favor one foot or leg versus the other. Now, I think they're doing a pretty good job at illustrating each of these data points and how you're measuring up, and they also have good explanations of what each of these data points actually means. But in addition to all that, they also have a more plain word evaluation summary wrapping up the assessment, which is something that you don't necessarily see that often. And in terms of how accurate this data actually is, so I've done this test a couple times now, and I think it represents my running form fairly well, and I was getting pretty similar results from test to test. I do tend to be a bit springy, I guess you could say, when it comes to my vertical movement, which could explain that lesser than ideal stride ratio, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit more testing on that. But it got me thinking that I've actually been wanting to do a deep dive into some of this kinds of data and how it compares to professional assessments as well as some similar devices. So make sure to subscribe and be on the lookout for that video in the future. 
My only real complaint about this new feature though is that you specifically have to do this test to get this level of data. You don't get this detailed running form assessment which is regular runs. You're still collecting a lot of the data like let's say your left and right balance but you don't get that actual assessment. Now one argument here though is that I suppose on a long run you may be encountering different kinds of terrain like lots of hills or different road surfaces which could skew the assessment because you're supposed to do this on flat ground. So I guess there's that but I would love to see them eventually be able to collect all this data on regular runs. In terms of when these features are going to be available, so they're actually already available for some beta testers out there, but the full release to everyone should be around February 1st. And again, these are going to be for courses more current watches, with exceptions being the original Apex 42 and 46 millimeter, as well as the Pace 1 and the Kip Run 500. Anyhow, that's just a quick little video I wanted to do about these new chorus features. And if you have any questions about them that I didn't cover, feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor and also hit that like button. In the meantime, happy running, and we will see you in the next video.